Welcome to an impromptu masterclass. Problems in the orchid hobby, I have got one of them and I was waiting for a couple of days to see if it would stop. So this was not on the schedule. You can see it's quite a windy day. I'm going to do my best to use this as a teachable moment because my little Zygopetalum Luisendorf over there on the left has rot issues. Now, I wanted to do two videos because I don't want things to get too long. And then I thought, you know what? A masterclass is what it is. We have a little bit of theory and then we move on to the practical side of things. And for that reason, timestamps are in the description if you want to skip ahead. So having said in the past few days, I have been noticing a little black spot on the oldest pseudobulb of my Luisendorf. And I thought, yeah, well, that's normal little black spot, zygopetalum, environmental issues, it's not a big deal. <laughs> a couple of days later, and here we are, we're going to do an intervention. I want to go through with you step by step how I'm going to go about hopefully saving what is left of the bulb because it has storage potential. And then we're going to also be talking about repotting this orchid. This orchid is still in its container. The media is still the nasty stuff it came with and I have been limping it along to grow two new growths waiting for the right time for roots. With regards to zygopetalums and their repot timing because I'm gonna be switching it over to LECA and self-watering, any kind of repot, especially on a weak orchid like this, you would want to wait until new roots grow. Well, with zygopetalums, new roots usually grow once a growth has matured and is about to start maturing the bulb as well. At this stage, I doubt I have any new root growth, but who knows what this hybrid is going to present me, and we are going to have a look. On top of that, the growth that I bought it with, with the beautiful blooms on it, has since rotted out, but you can see in the case of that growth, it just dried up. And that is what I was banking on with the other pseudobulb. It's not drying up fast enough for me. And secondly, it is spreading and feeling soft. We'll get to that. What I've prepared, and if you run into cases like these in your own collection, is to prepare your workstation ahead of time because you don't know what that rot is going to entail. We may get into that pseudobulb super quick and determine it's got to come off because the rot is already far too deep to save the pseudobulb, or we may actually end up saying, hey, <laughs> we can save at least three quarters of it, if not half, and see how it goes. On any weak orchid, you want to make sure that you maintain as much of the older storage organs as you possibly can, and then eventually cut it off for, you know, aesthetic purposes. But what you will need and what I have prepared is a big bowl of water, the cleanest water that you have, the one with the least amount of parts per million, and in my case, that is RO water. That is for sloshing and rinsing the roots so that all the old media comes off because in this case, we probably have a mix of some nasty cocoa chips that are old and degraded, as well as some choir and all that stuff. It really is easy to slosh it off in a bowl of clean water. The next thing that I would recommend that you have for cases like these is some bleach water to disinfect the cutting tools. Rot can be oozy, nasty, but it doesn't have to be. But what it does have is a multitude of bacteria and pathogens that if it is oozy and liquidy, you want to make sure that whatever you're removing the rot with is always nicely disinfected because we want to limit the spread of that liquid. And on top of that, I've got cinnamon at the ready, which should be really interesting when it comes to working with cinnamon on a very windy day. <clears throat> we'll get to that and I hope by that time, maybe the breeze or the wind would have died down. Anywho, I'm ready to go after all this. Let's see what we're up against. Oh, and by the way, I also have my fabulous handy dandy little gadget for when I make little melon balls for any salads or cocktails, even, you know, just watermelon, cantaloupe, whatever. There's a sharp edge around the rim here, and that may help me to scoop out whatever the rot is where the knife would cause too much damage, just in case. You never know. So let's get to the practical side of this masterclass and see what we are up against. That was relatively easy. <laughs> we like things when they go easy and, and work in our favor. 
getting all the etiquettes out of the way because obviously I've kept everything in the pot so that I could show you that nothing has changed from the day that I bought the orchid. So let's get some of the nasty out. Well, we have new roots. That's awesome. Take note, new root growth when it happens. Zygopedalums being very, um, let's say, ticklish on their feet and their roots, handle with care. That is where the water will also come in very, very useful because we'll just be, you know, like rinsing off any media around those roots. Don't want to be kind of pushing our limits with zygopedalum roots, especially when they're new like this. Now, in the past, I have said and also announced in a video that you can grow an orchid in rubbish media indefinitely. This was not going to be one of those candidates, but you can see how gorgeous these new roots are. And I'm really happy to be able to reference that video because this is all pH controlled. The media is such garbage, but the roots are happy and healthy. I think there is absolutely no denying it. And all I did was manipulate the pH to make sure that whatever is happening in the pot can be maintained. Or if new roots grow, <laughs> we get ourselves something like this. Right. This is important for me to recognize that the roots are already forming under an immature yet to even swell up growth. So that's super interesting. Let's get some obstacles out of the way and see what we're up against. Now, usually because the new roots are already growing, it would be ideal to cut this off. However, seeing as I started the video saying we're going to work with it, that is what we're going to do. Just going to try and get a little bit more of the media off. maybe attack some dead roots before we even cut into anything so that when it comes time to sloshing around removing the media i am not already using another utensil cutting into anything making it worse and i have a fantastic backup plan right here because this second new growth is also starting its root system. Fantastic. That's the way, uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Look, I'm not even put off that there is a lot of death in here. That is to be expected. What I'm really excited about is that I have a lot of life. So this root, let me make sure I keep this in focus. This root was viable right at the end, but the rest of it is garbage. So we'll just keep taking those off as best as possible. Now, because this orchid is relatively weak, I'm not going to be fussing with getting all the dead roots off. Just a little bit, you know, just to give me some time to make sure that I can leave the orchid in the pot long enough before Hopefully next year, just up potting her. So we've got very soft roots here that can all come off right at the base. This root looks nasty, but it is viable. Fantastic. It's probably a word I'm going to be saying quite a lot in this video. And then maybe not so much when we get into the rotted pseudobulb. Let's see what this root is all about. Yeah, it's all about coming off. <laughs> there we go. Let's get some bark off out of the base there. This root is attached to this piece of coca choir bark. I'm leaving it. If it doesn't come off on its own, 
then fine, you can stay. Not fast. It's also something you can do when you were, for example, to repot into organic media. Just because I'm going into inorganic media has no bearing whatsoever if you leave a bit of old media on the roots. As long as the pot, the majority of the pot is fresh and nice, a little bit of old media won't do any harm. So this is not exactly a how to repot Zygopedalum masterclass. This is more of, you know, let's get into that rot and see what we're up against. But while we have to get there, we also have to do some housekeeping so that when we're at it, we're not messing around with two different variables. Okay, I'm gonna get you down a floor. Let's attack this the right way. I want to start with the melon cutter. Let's see that I get the sun to work for us as well. I have bleached my hands. Oh, you see that liquid oozing? Yeah. That's what we have to be careful of. See how far in it's gone. We're gonna take all the yellow off as well and try to get into clean tissue. First layer. Still, a little bit more has to give. We're coming into the green. You see that? That's what I want to see. Nice green tissue. A little tougher around the rhizome, so my little melon gadget won't do the trick there. We're going to cut that off. We got ourselves some clean cuts. Now we've still got yellow over here. So let's give this another go. Trust me, cantaloupe isn't this tough. Sorry for being out of shot there. Do we get it all? Look at that. Using the bleach water for scraping. And now we can be a little bit more pedantic right up here. Just because, let's see how long the pseudobulb lasts. And we'll make a clean cut. Just for aesthetic purposes. Now that I've got green tissue, I am sterilizing at every cut. Ooh, it smells so nice of freshly cut grass. <laughs> As it is a zygo, as it is a sensitive root system, as it hates interferences, we're going to wrap the roots in a paper towel. We're going to wet that towel. Keeping that root system nice and damp, and it will take care of the cinnamon when we use that. Meanwhile, I did not have any nasty odor coming from that wound where the rot was. I am now spraying liberally hydrogen peroxide into that wound. Just gonna let that work in a little bit. And now I'm going to be super liberal with my cinnamon. But I mean super liberal. If you like your cinnamon in your food, wounds like this will absolutely benefit. And now we're going to lay her into the shade for a bit so that that can dry off before we start with all the other business of potting her up. And then we will watch and wait. We have conserved over 50% of that pseudobulb. You can see a little bit of rot starting down here, but it's not soft. It is hard. And I am not concerned about this part one bit because if we can get this to stay, this has enough energy to provide for these two who are now growing growth, we will be okay. This is right at the edge of the rhizome down here. And as long as it's hard, 
I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to approach this with caution and just observation. Should I intervene in future? I'll let you know about it. All right, it's been a while. You see, I also have my tag in the bleach. You never know where all those juices flow. And that's a rhyme. I'm a poet. I didn't know it. Okay, we're going to be very careful with this paper towel that has cinnamon on it. Just roll it into itself. We're going to turn the orchid around and knock off any excess cinnamon it may not have absorbed. I felt a little bit of a crack just now, so maybe I just cracked a root. Now, I did mention earlier that I want to rinse the roots, but I have changed my mind. Two things. I don't want any water in here, and that's not going to be a guarantee if I put the roots into the water to rinse them. They're fine. The flushing through the media, through the leka, through the new pot, it's not going to make a big difference. Secondly, I also changed my mind while it was drying. I thought, well, while we're at it, why not? The only thing I did for this bit of rot down here was to take my knife into the middle. I gave it a good twist and made a nice hole in there. Then I took my little cocktail gadget because you can see it has a hole in it there. I put the hole right over that wound and poured cinnamon through and stuffed it into the hole this way containing the cinnamon from blowing away and strategically got it in there. All that's left to do now is potter up. Little explanation of what I'm going to do next and my reasoning behind why I'm doing it. I usually do not support my spikes, but you never know when it comes to filming if the presentation isn't prettier if they are supported. So the support is there for eventualities and probably just to support the orchid a little bit better in the pot, even though I doubt she's going to need it. Secondly, this is a 15 centimeter pot. I would like to go larger because two new growths are coming. That means two new root systems because we're going to be thinking positively. I'm going to stick with 15 centimeters because I can then probably bump her up next year and then we can do an update on her. If I didn't have a channel and wasn't filming, I would bump her up to 18 centimeters simply because of the two root systems that are coming. Then, Zygopedalums, because she is a thirsty orchid and likes to have her roots consistently moist, I have small leka. No mix of large and small, small leka, and I think she'll do just fine. Thirdly, Zygopedalum roots or any orchid roots after a repot have been through some form of trauma. And especially the velamen could be bruised or damaged. That may be a bit too much water, so we're going to get rid of some. Normally, I fill the water up as high as possible, but because we're dealing with a wound, and as the leka rises, the water will rise. So I'm just making sure that my water isn't that high. Now, I've got wet hands, can't be helped. I suppose it's a good thing we're dealing with this orchid on a breezy day. Positioning of the orchid, I like to go into the middle. I am not going to go by any growth direction. She goes into the middle for me. I'm just assessing the height of the orchid because low is okay at the beginning. Too high isn't. I don't want to be repeating what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to start filling Lekka in on the side with no roots so that the Lekka can just pour nicely into the gaps taking advantage of an empty space and letting the leka just go into the space gradually and gently filling up around the root system. So we're going to let the water do the work for us. Give it a little bit of a shake. Just watch that lecker pour in nicely through into all the gaps. There's a crack right there. We'll leave it. Right, she's actually independently supporting herself up against that support. That's awesome. Look at those gorgeous roots. 
Uf. What I'm doing now is checking everything around the orchid. I want the base to be touching the media, but not buried to the leaf joint. I have another one here. These roots need to be covered up because they were before. The velamen shows us a transparency that shows us also that they were used to being covered up and they need to be in the same situation going forward. If I don't like one size of LECA, I go for another one. I'll find me the size. You see how much debris comes out? The more I flush, which is the aftercare, a lot, a lot of flushing, the more I do that, the more of this remaining old media will flush out of the pot as well. Whatever stays in the pot, it's not that big a deal. Plain RO water goes in for no other reason except that I have it. If you want to fertilize at this stage, you can do so. If you want to supplement at this stage, you can do so. My orchid has been treated with calcium, magnesium, and all that good stuff all these months. So me adding a fertilizer in there right now, it's not gonna make a big difference. Because I've got the RO water handy dandy, I'm using plain water, no fertilizer. Let's check her for her stability. She's fine. Okay, a few finishing touches. I suppose I could have left that little green bit exposed where some of the cinnamon came off when we turned it around to shake it off. But hey, we're at it, let's put it in there. Secondly, while the wound is drying, it is possible that the excess cinnamon will blow off. I had some roots exposed here. I don't want the cinnamon to fall on these roots and desiccate them. So for the time being, I'm going to have this paper towel on there, keep it damp, let the cinnamon fall onto the paper towel. So if you find yourself in a similar situation, repot, get it done, get that wound cleaned out. If you can save enough of the bulb, if you cannot, cut it out. I'm liking what I'm seeing, by the way, as well. This brown bit back here, the bract right here, that's just from the leaf joint that isn't rot, in case you were wondering. I just wanted to make mention of that. Basically, I could peel the leaf off, but that's just part and parcel of what's going on with the orchid. That is not rot in there. Anyway, Zygopetalum, Luisendorf, a little bit of a premature repot. I wasn't ready to do this, but we saw that the roots were fabulous. <laughs> and we got all that nasty cut out. She will remain in a bright, breezy location, which is not so difficult on my patio at the moment. If you have any questions, please address those in the comments. I'd be very happy to elaborate, and we hopefully will be able to see this orchid bloom once again. If you liked what you saw, please give this video a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. It supports the channel, it supports the video. Your time watching this video is also massive support, and I'm ever so grateful. Thank you very, very much. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.